stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have the agenda. Do I have a motion? Do I have any discussion or a motion for approval of the agenda? I can motion to approve the agenda. Amend it. Do you want to amend it for the calendar? Um, oh. Well, we have a couple. We'll just uh, add that at new business, okay? I think now's the time for that. Yeah, I think um, if, I would probably amend it to add it. We'll amend the new business to add the calendar, and there's probably another item we'll add on there, but we won't talk about that yet. So, um, <laughs> Do I have a motion to approve the amended agenda? Make a motion to approve the amended. Do we have a second? Second. Second. I'm sorry. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All aye. opposed. Motion carries. Um, the minutes for the November 16th, 2023 regular meeting of the Planning Commission. Uh, do we have any comments on it or do we have a motion to approve those? I'll make a motion to approve this. A second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Tonight we have two public hearings. The first is actually one that we did not close out the last time. It is a continuation of the uh, proposal for um, and the recommendation on an ordinance to amend the official zoning map to rezone 526 acres from the RL district to the village VL district. Um, it's 526 acres on seven parcels located all four corners of Cocker Mill Road and South Fulton Parkway. It's being called the Merrill Park property. And again, this is being continued from our last meeting. Um, and, and we've never really closed it out. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and allow follow the same procedures for uh, other public hearings when we're going to allow comments. Um, and, and those comments are going to be ruled the same way they have been ruled for the other public hearings. Uh, we're going to allow each side an equal opportunity to the floor and establish time limits for the public hearing. In this case, each side will have, well, let's decide in minutes. How many comments do we have? Um, now I have uh, one comment card. Oh, right now we'll allow 10 minutes per side, if that's all right with everyone. Um, and we can readjust that if needed to present the case. The city clerk is going to keep track of time and will inform each side when the allotted time is required. The clerk may also advise the speaker of remaining time for their side. If you desire to speak in support of or in opposition to the item, you must fill out a public comment card and turn it into the clerk. Those called to speak will be taken in the order that the speaker cards are received. All speakers should identify themselves by name, address, organization, if applicable, before beginning their presentation. The applicant and all those speaking in support of the application will speak first, and that's if the applicant so chooses. Uh, the applicant, if, uh, if the applicant does speak, may choose to save some of the allotted time for rebuttal following the presentation by the opposition. Those opposing the issue will speak next. If any time remains, the opposition will be allowed to rebut the final remarks made by the applicant. I, I don't think I'm going to start over, though. <laughs> um, please the speakers address all your remarks to the planning commission during the public hearing portion of this the members of the planning commission shall listen to the presentations and no action or comment on their part is in order until the chair declares the public hearing portion of it complete uh, following the presentations by the applicant those speaking in support of the application those opposing the application the chair is going to close the public comment period portion of the hearing for discussion and uh, decisions as appropriate. Um, so I think to start out, uh, we've read the item under the order. Mike, you've already, Mr. Morton, you've already uh, made your comments on this, but we have a new packet. Do you want to do, say a few uh, words on this? Sure, sure. There are a couple of changes. So we, I think we've heard the basic facts um, probably enough times in this group, 526 acres at the corner of Cochrane Mill and South Fulton Parkway. Um, right against Cochrane Mill Park, right against the uh, Bear Creek uh, Hamlet, and against the city of Palmetto, where the um, the applicant has another development that's been approved by the city of Palmetto. Um, there are a couple of changes um, uh, in here, a couple of things I would draw your attention to. Um, in the response to number three, 
um, in the action review standards, you'll note there's a difference in um, that final uh, preservation ratio, the effective preservation ratio of the project. It had previously been calculated on the um, percentage um, shown on the site plan of on-site open space in addition to the required um, TDRs. Um, in uh, in conversation with the applicant, um, the number of on-site acres being um, guaranteed by the applicant to be um, uh, to be preserved is double the requirement at 20 percent. The requirement is 10 percent. He's um, uh, doubling the requirement. So um, at some point, if he chooses to come back and seek uh, approval from city council to um, change the concept plan to um, show some development in areas where he currently isn't showing development, that might be something, but that would require city council approval if, if that were to happen. So again, within the zoning, only um, 20 percent or 105.2 acres. So the effective preservation ratio, if approved uh, under those terms, would be 79 percent, still above the city's general goal. Um, there is uh, in the uh, there are many changes, as you can see in the uh, proposed the recommended conditions. Um, one in particular that I wanted to draw your attention to is the elimination of the um, uh, condition around. Um, well, actually, I guess I should address two of them from the from the outset. Um, the first one, which comes actually later in the document, is the elimination of the condition around the signing of a development agreement. The development agreement is required by code, but the applicant has um, uh, expressed a preference to sign the development agreement before his zoning is approved by city council. And so the recommendation um, uh, in this document uh, makes a reference to that. Um, and uh, if it were to, uh, if it goes before city council, or uh, the recommendation for approval, it would also be not to approve without that development agreement in place or um, to uh, add a, uh, a a condition um, similar to, to the one that had been in there before, um, just in uh, spelling out in the conditions that the, um, the uh, development agreement is required, but it is required by code before the first preliminary plat anyway. Um, so um, that's um, why that one's missing. Um, there are also a couple of uh, conditions that have been eliminated related to um, city of Palmetto and the, the, the other project that's in the city of Palmetto. Um, of course, uh, we don't have the uh, ability legally to make requirements for what happens on the city of Palmetto side. Um, so those, uh, those have been those have been eliminated. Um, so those are the main things I wanted to um, draw your attention to. Um, uh, and uh, the fact that I guess we have the final notice of decision from uh, from Greta, um, which of course you received uh, a little over a little over a week ago. Um, that's it. And staff recommendation. Uh, staff recommendation. I'll read what read it as written. Uh, upon execution of the development agreement with the, the applicant, staff recommends approval of the ordinance with conditions, the recommended conditions as attached. Thank you. Um, I think we will go to the public comment portion now. Um, and the applicant, you have spoken often on this project publicly, uh, two public hearings, a couple of hearings already, um, in, in addition to work sessions and other presentations of the city council, it is your option if you would like to make any further comments at this point. It really is your option. Uh, I'd like to just withhold them. And um, if there's a need, then I can speak within my time. Thank you very much. If it, Thank you. Of course, if you all have any questions, I'm happy to come. I, I think there will be questions. I suspect there will be. Um, and so do we have the... Uh, okay, we do have one um, in support, Nick Byers. Uh, good evening, uh, Council. Um, appreciate the time to be here. Uh, I have served this area for a long time. I'm the acting or current president of the South Fulton Parkway Alliance. Um, our goal is to promote quality development and through education, through um, bringing quality development to this area. Um, in 2016, 17, we hosted uh, charrettes here uh, with the support of the ARC and to discuss what we wanted to see along the parkway. Obviously, I'm a logistics person. I started the, I'm one of the founding members of the Aerotropolis Alliance. We did the airport CIDs. And at airport task force meeting in 2008 or nine, I had read the book Aerotropolis and anyway, brought the phrase there and everybody kind of laughed at me and, and all that. <clears throat> anyway, years later, here we are, we had, you know, basically a 22 
develop, 22 mile developmental highway running through some great acreage. Um, I have been able to live at Serenby when my house was destroyed by a 50,000 pound tree. I've stayed at Fox Hall. I've served on the Development Authority Board in Douglas County as well. And Fox Hall has been a premier location for us. Um, I hosted an event there today. And so I'm pro or for this development. One of my major concerns that I want, want you to think about is that the truck traffic, if we continue to have development that needed to be more balanced and not so much towards logistics, if we're not careful, if we don't get some marquee development here in this area for residential, you know, some commercial, some some medical, all we're going to have is warehouses coming down the parkway. And what I'm concerned with is us inheriting the truck traffic without any of the tax benefit for that. So me being a logistics person, it's very easy for me to say that. I've experienced, you know, most of the quality development around here. I respect it. I understand it. There's, you know, we do want, we do want rural. We want a concentration of density at the nodes on the parkway. And then we want to, you know, respect the, the zonings that are here in Chat Hills. And I've experienced it in, uh, and really enjoyed this area. But we put a lot of sweat equity into this area and care about it and want to see the preservation that we can with it. But at the same time, if we don't put the right kind of development, which I feel this is, then we're going to have more warehouses creeping further and further down, down the parkway. I'm just very concerned about that. So thank you for the time. Thank you, sir. Do you have any other comments? And um, then we'll close the public comment portion of the hearing and uh, we'll move to discussion. Um, I, I think I think in this instance, we're going to go ahead and uh, because I'm aware there are a number of questions and discussion points, I think we'll just go to discussion rather than trying to do it in the context of a motion, if that is acceptable to the planning commission. Um, so uh, I, we can, anyone can start they want to, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. I've got a couple of questions on, on, on the, Mike, thank you for clarifying the question about the development agreement. It was just a matter of clarification on item number, condition number 20. Uh, as, as a preface, I will say we have been postponing a lot of this discussion because a couple of gatekeeper requirements just weren't there. Uh, one was the NOD, the final NOD. And as you mentioned, Mike, and we've seen it's come across now. And secondly, we didn't have the conditions at least the last time. We had conditions the first time, we didn't have them the last time to react to. So I think there are going to be my suspicion. I, I have some questions about the conditions. Um, in, in condition 11A regarding the easements for the trails, I see that that's been moved to 24 months. I think I understand there's been some discussion about that. I, I, my, I'm having a difficult time seeing why we can't get that done in 12 months. And uh, particularly given where they're supposed to be located and the fact that there's another provision in there about when they are, have to be constructed that I think gives plenty of leniency. So my thought on it is it really should be 12 months, um, not 24 months. We should go back to the original proposal on that one. Um, it, it, I don't know if anyone wants to discuss that or comments on it. No, I'm in agreement with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a second one that, and I'm, I'm not sure we, this needs to be, we need to try to rewrite this right now, but I think before, uh, depending on what goes before the council, I, I'm, I'm a little unclear about who pays for the cost of road improvements under the NOD. It's clear on the face of the conditions that if it's the deceleration or acceleration lines, that's the cost of the owner. But there, when you look at the Greta NOD, I'm not so sure about, well, particularly what are called alternative two in each. It's, if you want to, could, could you talk yeah. about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah, so yeah, this was brought to my attention just um, earlier today, and I think that's a very good catch. Um, uh, the NOD, um, as you say, is clear for the um, entrances and um, for the intersections that are not new entrances to the to the property. Um, there are a couple of alternatives shown, um, the first being a roundabout and the second being either signal or um, uh, I think all of those actually also have are, are, are signals. Yeah. Um, the language is clear in the roundabout about the applicant um, 
uh, contributing a proportional share or or the equivalent cost of the of the signal. The language is not clear in alternative two, where it talks about the signal that the applicant is is on the hook for a proportional share. So that would be an appropriate addition. Um, it makes sense to me. Um, and does does that make sense to others? Just to clear that point up, I think that's the intent. Um, so. so my suspicion, my expectation is we shouldn't try to necessarily write that language right now, but we ought to ask that you prepare that um, uh, uh, prepare that language if if there's any further action. Okay. Uh, one way or another, it goes to the city council, right. um, and so uh, we think that ought to be cleared up um, and be clear about the who actually pays for what with respect to the improvements. Um, I'll st I'll stop there for for now. Are there um, who else has comments that you would like to talk about? Here's my, here's my Let's just see what happens. Yeah, it is. Under 16, I would like to see. What is my plan about? Under 16, I would like to see C and D um, added back, if that's possible. That has to do with the landscaping at the entrances. And the other has to do with the 50-foot center line. So the so for letter C, as a, just a matter for discussion, um, uh, the um, applicant's intent was just to leave those natural. Um, they would just be um, wood. It's the wooded buffer. Mm -hmm. And so not to do any... Um, uh, anything that looks um, manicured or man-made, am I representing that correctly? It would just look like the wooded buffer. So it would just be buffer and then, you know, no particular landscape. You would just have the cross streets that lead into the, so the development from there. So, so, under, so we're covered in the other instance where it says they're going to do a diagonal cut to do the utilities. So we wouldn't have, uh, you know, gaps that's that created by the development. That's what I'm trying to that's make sure we cover. That's right. So for the roads, you mean you would want those to be? No, no, no. For there was a utility part in here. Yeah, that talks about that's that. you cut it diagonal, that, just so we don't end up with gaps. Along that the language, way. that language remains. Yeah. Um, it's uh, with a little bit of a caveat added to it, but it says, um, yeah, number eighteen, to the degree reasonably feasible. Uh, uh, um, all utility cuts uh, in the buffer shall be designed with angles or bends to prevent visibility of any structures, or any utility substations from outside of the district. Another sentence here, however, the owner and city understand that neither control what the utility providers require. Um, so to the degree that we can, either one of us can influence that, um, uh, that condition is there. I don't know if you okay. feel like that's got too much weasel language in it. but So we, ha we had C and D in here for a reason, and they were stricken. Do you, do you know what the reasoning was? The Sorry, the ones that were back up at... Uh, going back to 16. To 16, right. So... Um, uh, some of that was incorporated up above in, uh, whoops. So the landscaping was um, taken out entirely. The, sorry, I just need to find it. I just don't think we're asking too much here. All entrances shall be attractively landscaped. The landscape plan, including any signs or monuments, shall be approved by the district. Right. So 16C. Right. So 16C, we sort of talked about. And again, I'm not. Um, uh, so so again, what the what the owner was proposing for 16 instead of landscaping was just leaving them natural. Right. The woods that are there now would be there. They would cut, you know, they would cut the road in, but it would just be woods as it is now. Not so um, it looked like syrupy. What about signs? So it would look like so it would look like Cerami. There'd be no additional landscape. You'd cut a road in through the woods. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Preserve the buffer. Yes. Okay. Okay. But I would still like to see that word that that will take place. Okay. Oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Right. Destroy. Right. Then. That's all I'm trying it has to do. To be Preserved. Okay. And Just. Also, yeah. It does talk about monuments and signs, um, and I would like to see that considered. Right. As to what that's going to, you know, look like and how it's going to flow. So something different than the regular sign ordinance, uh, sign application approval. Well, why process. don't you explain the the sign ordinance, if you would? Right. So right, we have a sign ordinance that requires um, a permit for any sign. So 
it's not, um, you know, it doesn't tell us what the sign is going to look like, um, but it does say, does it, excuse me, have a limitation on sizes. Um, um, so there's a, a normal um, application requirement, but it's not, there's not like an, an aesthetic review of what, of what the sign's going to look like, right? It just needs to meet the the sign requirements, which is basically about size, right? Height above the above grade, those sorts of things. How many there can be, how big they can be. And Christine, what are you looking for on that? You look for more on that? Some sort of design review by well, somebody. I mean, I liked that it said, you know, that a landscape plan would be presented, including any signs or monuments that would be put up. That was in C, which goes along with the maintaining the natural buffer. Mr. Merrill, may, may we ask you a question about that? Um, the, the question here has to do about the entranceways and what they're going to look like um, yep. under the current plan. And I think we're hearing that they're going to be vegetated buffers, but they're going to be naturally vegetated. Probably. Yes. And I think there's a concern about when utilities go in or there's other activities out there that cut vegetated buffer down. I would I would think that the concern would be we want, we want it replaced. It, would that be the intention? Yes. In other words, what you're going to have is you're going to have a master plan development. Uh, it's going to be mixed use. We're going to be getting uh, a signage group to come make recommendations to us as to what those would look like within your uh, regulations. And then also we'll obviously have landscapers. So when we put in one of the roads, which by the way, I think the question was, it's our expense to put in the roads. It's our expense to put in the, uh, uh, the uh, our portion of, or the signals, if, if that's the total portion of the signals. Um, and the same thing would be true of the landscaping. So it's got to, for the village to work as a mixed use development, particularly with the buffers, this is, this is not your normal village where you have the facing of the commercial structures on the road. You've got a 150 foot buffer. So you're going to have to have some kind of connectivity. And we haven't figured that out because we were hoping to have, as you know, the buffers eliminated with respect to uh, that area, and, and we just decided not to go there to get zoning. So um, there will be landscaping. Uh, there will be, uh, uh, I think they're called mini, and we're not familiar with these, but mini roundabouts uh, and or signalization at each of the busy areas. And there'll only be one, there'll only be two areas that'll be, I think, really busy, which will go into commercial party development where you're shopping and your offices and your other things will be in terms of your mixed use development, restaurants, et cetera. Yeah. And, so, and if I can, uh, let me remind you. What we did, we took the original. Um, is it okay to put it down? Can you can see. It? Well, let me just put it here. Uh, we moved back. We had the development, and let me reorient it here and in myself. Uh, this is north. Uh, this is south. This is this is uh, South Fulton Parkway again. North, south. This would be west, and this would be. I think it's surmounted at the top. Let's see, am I the top left? left this is northeast. Yeah, yeah. So let's change it around. That's fun. Okay, so, so again, north, this is what fronts the existing park. And you see that the buffer between the parks is 300 foot buffer on, on South Little Parkway. We pulled the village, which is here, back by 150 feet. So there'll be a natural buffer here of 150 feet on both sides. And then you'll have your roads connecting here. Uh, and these will be, to the extent that we can, it'll be left natural. 
because uh, it'll look better that way if you're going to have the 100 foot to foot buffers, which we didn't originally recommend. We don't think this is the best village plan that we could do. We think the original one that was done by TSW was the best. But because you've rebuffed the requirements and pulled them back, if you think to the extent possible, it needs to stay all natural. So when utilities come in, yes, we will landscape when utilities come in. What you can't do is control the utilities. They're like a railroad or they're like a, a foreign country. They'll tell you what they will do, and then you kind of have to work around. Y'all probably experienced that before. So I don't know that I answered the question. Would you ask the more precise question? That I have to no, thank you, particularly on the uh, proportionate cost of the Greta required improvements. Um, that is clearly what we need to have in there. With respect to the vegetated, I, I think that there are, um, there is a condition that's probably needed about replacing the vegetated buffer. Oh, the number 18. Number 18. Why was it lined out? So that reads pretty well. It says it required insufficient vegetation, provide satisfactory screening, and should plant additional native evergreen. That sounds pretty clear. Why was that scratched out? So the um the language in the zoning um was intended to um require the screening um uh, so there was there was some thought Meryl. that the the existing language was Mr. good Meryl, enough you don't have to keep holding that up <laughs> <laughs> um, i think i think the restoration of that condition would be um a, a nice addition several several passes through this in one of them um uh, the goal was to remove as much uh language redundant of the um uh, of the zoning or the UDC language as possible, and subsequent revisions, other things were put back in um, um, to sort of lock them into the conditions in case of future changes in there. This one didn't get put back in, but I do like that condition. 18. The old 18. The old 18, oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I was going at. Um, have, we, have we got, go ahead, I'm sorry. Roundabout at the parkway, is that something that, who makes that, I mean, there are no roundabouts in the parkway now, right? Right. He's president of the Parkway Alliance. Mm -hmm. No, no. Would is that something that would be beneficial or a negative? You know, I I'm not the expert on that. Even though I've done a lot of work with GDOT, um, you know, it would involve traffic flows. You know, traditionally, obviously, we've been anti curb cuts and things like that. Right. But keeping the flow of it, you know, I would leave that to the experts okay. with GDOT. That's a good question. I mean, I would love to see a roundabout versus. A, I like roundabouts from maybe help the standpoint, trucks, but I guess we don't put that in this. So in the so in the NOD expresses a preference uh, for roundabout. The city has um, has expressed it's it's been in um, GDOT plans. The Kane Studio um, uh, DRI, as you remember, included roundabouts um, on the Parkway, but. What happens there is going to end up being in the hands of of GDOT. They were going to have to approve whatever happens there. And number twenty, that's the development agreement that is required. The former, that's right. The former twenty, yes, that's right. So that has to happen. That's right. And that's right. And that's why it was scratched out. Because yeah, the intent was to for that to be signed before anyway. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and if if not, again, the recommendation to city council would be to restore that language or something very similar uh, to it. But I don't think the applicant's interested in. Um, a rezoning without a without a development we agreement in hand. We'd like to do the development agreement as part of the zoning. So the development agreement will not be, we, we don't want to get a zoning and 30 days later or 60 or 90 days later it's withdrawn. So we'd like to get the development agreement done before the zoning. So if we can't reach a development agreement, then obviously we don't get zoned. And thank you for those town halls at Fox Hall that you've held above and beyond. I think that helped the community and your comments about the buffers on the golf courses being um, people desired the buffers. So as a person there, kind of as a developer, you're a little contradictory in that you didn't want them, but you kind of see the vision of our city and you see the why they're necessary. Well, I, th I think what I said was I was in Phoenix when when actually, which is full of golf courses, and suddenly in a period of about five years, open space became more important with bigger premiums 
than than golf courses, and that never happened in history. It's still true. And so we believe in trails. We believe in open spaces. We do think there are premiums for that. Uh, the reason we didn't want, and and really came from TSW, is you want connectivity of your village, and your buffers take it away. And that's a decision for the city. And we made that decision to to restore those buffers and not ask for variance so that we comply. Number one, we locate the village where you've always had the village, you have it in your general plan. That's been one of the villages for 20 years, at least every plan has been for that village to be there. Uh, number two, uh, obviously a variance gave rise to the opportunity to say no. Uh, we have the Laura here, is that Laura? Yeah, we call it Laura's buffer. And uh, she couldn't get over that. And we met with her uh, and she couldn't get over it. So we made the decision to leave the buffers as they are so there'd be no variances. And, but the, uh, and then of course the TDRs from our perspective as a developer, we don't like TDRs because you're paying to be able to build residential, uh, but we do like the result and you're not going to get to your 75% or your 80% open space without. And there hadn't been any movement on them in 20 years. So activating that is, is we're agreeable to that. We think it's a good idea. And we set up with uh, uh, Doug a, a way to do that with it's a payment each time a house sells. So it's going to perpetually, if you will, uh, increase the conservation fund and those funds presumably required to go to uh, conservation. Right. So we wanted to comply all the way around so we felt like we could we could be assured that we get the zone. Right. And the, uh, look, the buffers are part of our city. It's part of the, mm -hmm. you apply that buffering to some of your other projects that are adjacent to us. Would you, are you building this to the standard that you would want to live here? Pardon? Would you want to live in your village? We don't build anything that we wouldn't be comfortable living with. My enjoyment as a developer is the planning, the buying of the property. So we're not just a planner. We buy the property, we own it, and we plan it. We've done, we have 30,000, 26,000 acres out in Phoenix. None of the four communities that we did out there would we not be delighted to have lived in. And the same is here. If I wasn't living in Foxhall, then I'd be living here. I made the decision when I moved from Buckhead, I said, I can go back to Buckhead, you know, six times a week, and I now resent going back once a month. So, <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> yeah. You get used to this solar picture. And the build out, give, remind me of the timelines of what you estimate. That's a great question, Ron. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, this is a large <laughs> development. We're looking for particular type. Uh, companies that will be high pay. I mean, it's, it's the whole concept of the Georgia Aerotropolis part of the South Fulton Parkway is you want to get national, international, regional headquarters. You want to get good jobs. You want to get companies in that 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 are going to build to the standards that you expect and want to have there. This this is the key. This is now the property. It wasn't, it used to be 92 until they, to give the expression, screwed it up with all the warehouses. <laughs> but this is the center of the Georgia Aristopolis Carter. And I think all of the good companies, the great companies that want to locate close to the airport and want to locate in the Carter are going to be here or they're going to be at Fox Hall. And I think I've mentioned that we got a shot at Fox Hall authored by the state of Georgia, Department of Economic Development and Georgia Power for the, the international headquarters, the LPGA, PGA, uh, uh, Deloitte's uh, uh, $400 million uh, training center that they decided to just double the one in Dallas and several other projects were under NDAs. We had one of the largest or the fastest growing technology company in the world that was going to locate at um, uh, uh, one of their, well, their only um, 
place for all of their employees across the world to come at Fox Hall. So we've gotten looks, we just haven't landed them yet. So, so depending on the first on one that lands, I think will accelerate the others that you asked me. It's going to be somewhere between right now. I don't think anybody's going to locate anything in the next uh, year or two until interest rates come down. But I would say probably between four and seven years, we should be able to get the uh, the first big company. It could come. It could come in five months. It depends on how the Department of Economic Development who they have. There's certain ones that we've turned down. We've turned down a lot of data centers. Uh, we've turned down for this property. I, well, I'd say this property is the one next door in, uh, in the city of Palmetto. We've, we've turned down uh, certain studios and because they're concepts that have come over the last several years. Uh, we've turned down every discussion of logistics centers. And by that, I just mean warehouses. That's just a nice it's kind of like uh, Nick's the expert on it, but he also opposes it for the George Aerotropolis Cardinal. We've turned down a lot of folks. We know what we want here. This is going to be a village. This is going to be special. This is going to be what we dreamed of 10 years ago when we first came up with the whole narrative for the George Aerotropolis Cardinal. I may say, I can validate the Deloitte, the PGA, and the LPGA because I was pretty upset that we weren't at that time, we weren't far enough down the road to meet some of the hotel requirements that they needed because they had consultants flying in and out. But it, that that was really on the table because I was on the development authority board at that time. Thank you. Um, Ronnie? Uh, I wanted to go back to what I was trying to accomplish. Or 16 C okay. I'm like, we're still on D. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to go back to C just to get my point across. What what when we had the movie studio here, and that was a, also a very difficult process we went through. They came back and they presented a rendering that showed their entrance. I don't know if everybody remembers what that looked like. It looked like any other entrance around here to a farm or what have you. All I'm trying to do is make sure that we have some language in here that preserves the character that we have here in Chat Hills. And we don't have some celebrated monument that has trees that don't belong here and landscape that doesn't belong here. I'm just trying to make it fit. The well, your, your landscaping here is natural. I understand that. But, but how I, do well, we know that's going to stay there? Yeah. Um, without, how do we know that's going to stay there? What, I, what, what I'm trying to get to is an agreement that you, you're not going to have some glorified entrance that distracts from the rural character that everybody's used to. And I don't know how to say to cooperate with your planning department as to what those entrances should look like. So it'll be a kind of a partnership between if we have a corporation who wants to locate a headquarters there, mm -hmm. it'll be a cooperative effort between us because we're gonna we're gonna have to define our own design standards for the development itself and the corporation and your planning department. You, you, Can we get when some... you say you don't want certain kind of instance, I, pre I presume you're talking about something that just doesn't fit in. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, but I, what I'm what I'm really saying, I don't want it to look like something on South Fulton Parkway where they have the giant monument sign that says Truck Center here. What that's for corporations and what have you. We don't have that here. If, if I may, and I'm uh, Mr. Merrill's attorney uh, in house. Um, I think what you're trying to get at is well, what is your name, sir? Chris West. So, if you want to address it, would sure. you come up, please? So uh, Chris West, 135 Wimberley Estates Drive, Noonan. So I think what you're getting after is, um, and I wrote this down when you were speaking earlier, is an effort to preserve natural buffers. Um, and I suspect that we'd be willing to do that. I would caution one thing though, is if if we or if we put too much requirements on what the external looks like, if you're talking to somebody like a fresh market and getting fresh market to come, they have certain requirements for visibility that those may conflict with. 
So I would just caution if we make it a condition that we have to do that, that's going to constrain us from being able to pull fresh market in. So I just wanted to just share that just as a just a, something to chew on and thinking about it. Thank you. And I'm confident that flexibility is not something we're trying to dry up here. No, uh, we're not. I, I just I just want there to be a conversation about this and this not just be accepted that this is an open-ended, you know, mm -hmm. form. Why are we bound to follow fresh markets rules about those things? Um, well, we're actually not. <laughs> that's, a whole, that's a whole other thing, right? right. Um, not. Well, is it on? Yep. Okay. Yep. It also goes to what you're saying about willing to work with us, but scratching 10 and 11 that talked about guaranteeing a pleasing and unified character along Cochrane Mill Road and working with the city. I understand having to scratch the city of Palmetto from those two areas, but why not continue to work with the city on the planning that was in 10 and 11? Do you want to read that? We've already, we've already done the planning on the, on the 14 of acres. That was zone 15 years ago, 16 years ago. And that's fine, yeah. but why scratch it on Chat Hill's section? Because Chat Hill gave your planning director the ability to decide whether or not we're going to be able to proceed with certain things in Palmetto, and that's not appropriate. And, and I think, just to clarify, I think what uh, Ms. Gallagher is suggesting is that uh, condition 10 or 11, the provisions having to do with Palmetto can be stricken, and the remaining ones that still apply just to Chattahoochee Hills can be relevant uh, and, can be, and should not be objectionable. They're they're pretty flexible. But, but to that end, uh, we know we don't have the authority to, to deal with Palmetto, but as a developer and as a, you know, with what you said you wanted to do, I would assume on some level that what you're trying to create, you want a cohesive environment. There's not going to be, here's what Palmetto looks like on, once this line stops and here's what Chad Hills looks like. They're, they're going to at least talk to each other so that well, we don't have some. To each other and the, we're the developer, but. It is, it's not going to have a 150 foot buffer. Uh, it is going to have a, uh, a one, maybe two roundabouts. Um, but no, that, that development has been planned. We just spent over the last three and a half years, not that it makes any difference, but almost a million dollars on the planning for that property. Uh, and remember, we actually, think the better village is the village we know. that doesn't have the buffer. So we don't plan to have, we will have buffers, but we have, won't have those kind of buffers in, uh, in the uh, city of Palmetto. If we were planning these, if we had owned this property from the beginning, uh, I've been trying to get it, it took me 17 years to get it, then, uh, then it would be a little bit different. These, these will be different developments. They will not be as if we had owned and planned them all together. This this is a village uh, that's primarily a residential development, which will have a piece of um, where the where the promenade is. It'll be a very wide, very impressive promenade. There will be a Cerebi type development there, but it'll also have remember that that's going to be everything from affordable housing to executive housing. It will, it will not be like Ceremony where it's primarily almost all executive housing. We've got to have a situation where people who are gonna serve the village, who are gonna serve the companies, et cetera, where, they, where it'll be affordable for them to live here. Okay. Mike, um, on, on the entrances, because I still think I think we on 10 and 11, there seems to be agreement that we can strike out the references to the city of Palmetto. But re add them to say Chat Hills. So, so what you're looking for, sorry, Christine, yeah, that you're looking for this, this list of, of things to be reviewed. I mean, the city of Palmetto. Right. So, still need those. Things. Right. So, what... 11 is more about coordination. Um, with the other city, there's there's not much okay. meat in there for Chat okay. Hills alone. Okay. Um, there is a meat in number ten about. Um, uh, it's more so ten. The urban design, right, right, 10. and architecture. 
Um, and there's nothing that stops the cities from coordinating with each other. There really is nothing. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think, but. Right, right. Yeah, we can coordinate with with Palmetto regardless of the of the condition. Um, so yeah, we can certainly um, restore that instead of mentioning Palmetto there. Um, uh, include many of those things are already covered in the, in the code, but um, uh, yeah, we can certainly uh, certainly do that. So what's covered in the code, Mike? I'm sorry, I'm moving on a little quickly here, but um, back to 16 C and D. I'm not sure we got resolved there. Yeah, uh, if we have resolved anything here, but. Um, 16 C, right. So, right. So there is a requirement. Landscape plans are part of the um, uh, the development, the LDP process. Yeah. Um, we could add, though, if we, if we want language, um, uh, the the, um, the entrance is appearing natural. Um, landscape and monument plans being um, uh, uh, submitted along with the land disturbance permit that includes that the construction of that entrance, so that we would have those we would, by condition have those in hand when those. Um, uh, when those are being reviewed, the the land disturbance permits for those roads, and can a signage be added in there too? And mm -hmm. I think that's getting to an aesthetic component to it. Right, right. So, right, if you want to add any aesthetics on the signs, I, I, I don't know if you want to draft those standards um, outside of the the regular sign standards. The other thing I would uh, mention is the last sentence in this letter C: um, All required entrance landscaping is to be installed before the issue of the issuance of the first. Uh, certificates of occupancy. Again, I would limit it to that one. Um, uh, the adjacent, right? What right, right. On the well, whatever would be covered on the final plat that's a result of that LDP, right? So the first CO that comes um, from construction of that phase, whatever that, whatever was approved in that set of construction plans. Well, I appreciate you trying to do this while we're sitting here, but what, what, where are you ending on this? Mike and what we're talking about, right? So, so we would restore. Um, uh, I don't know that. So, the first sentence would rather than be attractive landscaped. I would say um, naturally, um, or uh, landscaped, um, because you did mention adding some, doing some landscaping, right? Which is um, different than what I, I I thought we were expecting. Um, um, so all interest should be naturally landscaped. Um, a landscape plan, including signs or monuments, shall be approved by the director with the first land disturbance permit that includes that entrance, something to that effect. Fine with that. That would be great. Okay. Works for everybody. Okay. I just want more explanation on D and why it was in in the first place and why it was stripped. If you could explain the 50 foot from center of Packer Mill and along the front of the Wilkerson Mill Road, that, that, that I, I don't understand. So I'm sorry, you may repeat. You may read it. Uh, uh, where it, it's 16 D, so old, old 16 D. D, yeah. Uh, the owner of the city says, Oh, so, um, that was actually incorporated if you look up at the top of the page, um, in, in not so many, um, not the same words. Um, this included a a reservation, but we have buffers. Reservations are are pretty standard with our buffers. Um, uh, they would control that property if we needed to take the right of way, because the reservation is really in case you need to expand the right of way, right? For for so we do have up above. Um, uh, uh, incorporate we provide additional right of way necessary. Right. Um, sorry, where was it? I was. I spent a minute searching for it, and now it's disappeared on me again. It does say that they will um, uh, provide the right of way necessary for. Oh, there it is. Um, so yeah, sixteen. The the red line um, in sixteen A entrances for the village as described in Appendix A of Greater Notice of Decision incorporated here by reference and provide the additional right of way necessary for acceleration and deceleration lanes at no cost to the city. So that handles the additional. Okay. Um, the, right. the additional right of way necessary. Um, what was spelled out in the part that got struck stricken um was that um any additional right of way donated there would not mean um would not count against their their buffer so it would could effectively result in a 10 to 20 foot reduction of the buffer in that case but i think that's only practical because it may happen when they've already built on the other side of the buffer that's fair um mr lightsey you have items you want to discuss. 
Yes, uh, that's not to shut off anybody else from <laughs> talking. It's just I'm kind of making my way around the table here. I mean, if I ask anything that somebody else wants to jump in on, by all by all means, do. Um, uh, I had I had kind of similar questions about the about the the ten and sixteen and eighteen, also um, twelve uh, in in the condition about the ladder truck, uh, donate has turned into a uh, has, and uh, presumably uh, the applicant then is no is not interested in donating the ladder truck to serve the community there. That was since it, I, part of my problem is that is uh, there's no indication in the strikeouts who did who struck out what and so I so I'm uh, right right that, that was that was the applicant um, indicated um, that simply acknowledging that they can't build a tall building if we don't have a ladder truck um, was uh, they they weren't willing to um, uh, purchase for the city a, a ladder truck is that. We weren't because we don't. Whoever's going to build the tall buildings is going to clearly need a ladder truck. If that's us first, then we may have to do it or contribute to it, and we're all right with doing that. But the language that we had, it we were not. Uh, we were not going to do that. So, so no, and and then so then in fourteen, the uh, agreed upon just means like not. I'm just trying to understand the docs. Mutually agreed. Scott, which was 14. Right. Um, if requested by the city, uh, city council, the property owner. Will, right. So they'll dedicate, they'll dedicate a lo uh, location for a fire station. Um, and it just says, yeah, that it needs to be mutually agreed upon by. Um, so there's no location in the site plan now. Um, but they will, if the city requests a site, they'll provide a site for a fire station. Okay. But it has to. There, there was a site located in the Greta plan. Uh huh. Right. I, I don't recall when it was a city-owned property that was in the in I think it was indicated in the Greta plan. I don't think so. Okay. Well, I may have misread. It seemed to me it stuck out at me when I looked at it, but um, the city. I, I don't mean to get distracted on this. Uh, it. Uh, uh, the question is, we're not designating where the city-owned property would be. Uh, or where the fire truck would come from. Right. 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 I was... It's a unicorn. We don't... Magical. Yeah. That's correct. It was... Uh, and and, and I, I, don't, I don't know to what extent that's our, you know, in our ambit, but the, but the sense of, you know, a build, the build-out and all the other requirements... You know, a, a much smaller development is donating a fire truck if that ever comes to be. You talking about the uh, the studio? Stella, no, the studio. The studio. And, well, and yeah, I mean, there. Are, it's been I'm asking because it's been incorporated in much smaller developments before, and it's a huge, a huge requirement given the scope of what's being discussed here. So I was just surprised to see it taken out. Well, this this neighborhood will populate more than our whole city currently has now, correct? Um, yes, yes. Mike, where, where have we put these in before? Is it with the Kane Studios and the and the Spella Hotel? Uh, the Kane Studios included a uh, donation of a ladder truck. The uh, Spella Hotel. The hotels in the Serenby um, included a yeah. uh, contribution toward a truck. In the final version, it ended up being a contribution toward. We're okay with that kind of language. Uh, that's what we've got in the NOD with the, uh, uh, which was, which was, that was, I would call it a negotiated NOD with uh, Greta, but we're happy to contribute toward things. We just don't want to be required to do things that may or may not be needed at the time there's a development uh, that that may actually have the need and we're not that development. Now, presumably the idea is if you are ready to build a multi-story structure that requires a big ladder, you can't get that going until there's a truck. Absolutely. And that brings you to the table. That presumably is, is the dynamic we're talking about. But I do think that there's some merit to putting in 
uh, one of the provisions like we've done before about, I don't know if it was proportionate or um, a proportionate share. I'm not sure what that means, actually, what that would mean. It, the hotels had a not to exceed number of $500,000. Why should a product I'm sorry. How much is uh, they can be a million or more. I... They were you. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it, would it be uh, acceptable or something that if you if a similar provision were included here about the fire truck? Did I hear that that was? It depends on where we are in our development. For example, if you want a fire truck for a seven-story building and our buildings are four stories then no, we would not contribute to a, a ladder truck required for a seven-story building. But if we've got a tenant or a uh, corporation who's building a seven-story building, then they would contribute probably for us or with us uh, and would have to in order to build that seven-story building. I'm not, I'm not sure that's clear. Let, let no, no, I get it. I get it. I, I get it. I get it. One one is with regard to the uh, fire station. We all want a fire station here. It'd be great. It'd be great for development. So we're absolutely willing to do that uh, in connection with the development itself to make sure that it fits in the right place. And I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. We discussed that at the Secondly, with regard to the fire truck, if if there's a we can't build a building over four stories i do anticipate when you've got a corporate campus that they may want more than four stories we're going to have to come in and there's going to require a fire truck and if there isn't another fire truck that already exists for a building over four stories then we're going to have to buy that fire truck in order to get it over four stories that was the intention of the negotiation with uh with mike This needs to be spelled out or written down for us. Yeah. Well, so they won't get approval from the fire marshal if we can't. Right. It's so redundant. Right. But yeah, if we want to spell out, um, it would be similar language to the old language. Um, Distribution. Not to exceed. They're already just flat out bothered if they need to. Right. right. So before the issuance of the first building permit for a structure with a height greater than 40 feet, that was how the, it began, the property owner will. Uh, contribute a sum not to exceed. That would be so. Trying to reconstruct something that that works um, on the on the, on the fire truck. So the language began um, before the issuance before the issuance of the first building permit for a structure with a height greater than forty feet. The property owner will contribute uh, sum not to exceed X. Uh, for the city to purchase a ladder truck suitable for fighting fires within the district um, or fighting fires uh, for. First of all, I think we now understand why it was stricken, um, why that provision was stricken. Yeah, um, I think that's been explained. We now understand that um, it, it strikes me that there is some more thought that needs to go into. Uh, this when we have more than one developer proposing big buildings, right? right? Buildings that may require. Uh, and so uh, how that works out equitably, uh, it probably needs some more thought and development. So um, I, I, I'm, I, I'm I'm afraid any language we come up with tonight is true and there's going to be so vague, it's not going to help much. Um, it's going to be equitable portion, mm -hmm. proportion, and I'm not sure what that means, uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, Mr. West may have some ideas, but I'm I'm I think I think this is going to take some more thought, uh, Mr. Morton. I think I think not to exceed number. No, I think look, I, I here's the way. Let me just explain the way my experience with development, which is because I'm old a lot. <laughs> so, and it, it's really in there, and 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 Mike took care of it in the negotiations, and that is. It's, it's kind of like the sewer. The first person who's going to build is going to pay for the sewer. Yeah. The way I like to do it is yeah. the other ones who come along contribute toward that. 
but most of the time that doesn't it's happen. It's really hard to make happen. If we're going to build a five-story building and we're the ones who are going to build it, then we're going to end up having to buy the fire truck. Hopefully use fire truck, but a good one that will get to that five stories. <laughs> and it's seven stories or, or, or uh, six stories, it'll be the same thing. Uh, that's usually the way that it goes. So, so should there be, a, we don't know if we're going to have a five story building. So should we contribute if somebody else does it and we don't have any builders? No, we shouldn't, nor should they, if we build first. So it's kind of the way, it's kind of the way you negotiate. It, we do. It. Um, Mr. Lacey, does that respond adequately for you? I do. I mean, it answers the question. It answers the question. Yeah. Um, on that sub on that subject, I guess related, and because you mentioned sewer, the uh, the city offers the, uh, under uh, zoning action review standards uh, offers language about the time to build out. You know, just kind of a general some general language. But the applicant's material specifies quote considering the new pump station and force main being constructed. Um, pump station, I assume, being water. No, may, may I explain that? So, so right next to our property, um, they are taking out an existing sewer plant that was built for the old cousin subdivision that was built 40, 50 years ago, whenever it was built, it looked like it was 40, 50 years ago. They are replacing that sewer treatment plant with a pump station that goes to the Ono Road pump station that's pumped further and, and eventually ends up okay. in, so it refers to sewer treatment plant. It refers to sewer then. Um, what so about, the water is the city of Atlanta. The sewer is Fulton County, so it gets very confusing. What is the status of the water? Because that's, a, you know, the a, a huge problem. The status of the water is they've got plenty, uh, the, the, the piping is okay. The pressure may be an issue and the city doesn't know that. So we're going through that with the city on the other development. Yeah, the, with regard to the sewer, sewer, as you know, is, and we've given all the easements for it to get, and it's largely been put in, is going to Serenby, they'll take care of our property, and take care of other properties along the way. And it's kind of the, who comes first uh, gets the, uh, the sewer capacity. Okay, thank you. Mike, what is the capacity of that line? Because every development that comes along talking to us says, oh, well, the sewer's coming. Right, the sewer. Um, it's coming I, everywhere. I can't tell you the number. The county, when they were putting it in, um, uh, basically expressed their interest in supporting whatever whatever comes along. They said they had plenty of capacity in the Ono Road pump station, not necessarily pump capacity, but the ability to add more pump capacity there, which they said they would do as necessary. Um, so they express their 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 ability and interest in in going ahead and providing what what capacity was was available. I don't know the existing line they're putting in now, the eighteen inch or so line. Uh, it's bigger than that, isn't it? Let, um, let me answer your question. They they're doing a force main between this pump station and Ono Road, and then they're having connections along that, uh, and plus they're going to Sarum, and then they're having connections so that you can connect to the force main. Uh, both places. They could not build a force main to accommodate everything that's now planned along the way, whether it's in it's in the city of South Fulton or it's in uh, uh, the city of Chattahoochee Hills. So what we had them do was enlarge the well itself. So they may end up being, and, and, and you can't build the, the force main too large because if it's not used, Right. Then it degenerates very quickly, right. and there's not enough sewer capacity if you build a really huge line for them to use it. So what they're planning on doing is as development takes place in the city of Chattahoochee Hills, as development takes place in the city of South Fulton, is they're going to build probably a dual force main. They'll go to that same now larger well at that pump station. Okay. Do you, do you have any insight on the water? Because right according to the minutes of the uh, Middle Chattahoochee Regional Water and Sewer Authority, uh, they've 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 got no movement. They don't know where their money's going, and they point to a capacity crisis and a pressure problem 
uh, that uh, is impacting safety issues to the point where they've got four in progress projects stalled out uh, on hold, including the Microsoft thing for lack of water capacity over there. The Microsoft so, thing is, is, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not in Palmetto. I don't know, but they've got. Is it in Palmetto? Palmetto the Microsoft? Fairburn. But anyway, it's one of four projects that according, it's a data center, right. Um, that they, that because they don't have water capacity and the, and the minutes repeatedly mention safety issues due to pressure. Well, so I do you have any insight into the one? They do have water capacity. Uh, this is what prime engineering and engineers tell us. The problem is a pressure problem, and they have it in different locations. That, that I guess they have not they have not done the uh, what do you call it the, the double um, forgive me this is a senior moment I can't think of the name of it. So they haven't done the connections where they Oops. where they got Oops. the dual way to get there, but the pressure they're having problems in Palmetto. They may or may not have problems in, in the city of Chattanooga Hills, and they may or may not have problems. They don't appear to have problems because we got another development in the city of South Fulton. Mm -hmm. uh, so nobody knows about, everybody knows their potential pressure problems. Nobody knows the extent of the problems. And, the, and, and those can be solved. It's just money. Yeah. yeah. That pipe, I can't speak to the 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 pumping problem. That that pipe that runs down uh, Cochrane Mill Road and eventually goes down to the Coweta County line was designed to provide a lot of water to Coweta County. Twenty four inch pipe, a lot of extra capacity in there. Now I don't know if they're having pump issues, pressure problems. I, I do know that 18, 24, and twelve inch lines and maybe eighteen maybe some eight inch but I, I know we've got the big lines along here so. When this pressure problem came up, which I think surfaced for the first time about a year ago, is nobody understood why there was a problem because we thought it would be in the size of the lines. But it's not the size of the lines. It's something else that I don't fully understand because I'm not a I'm not a war guy. But that that's where they are. They're not quite sure, and therefore they can't tell us. But there are areas right now, for example, in Palmetto, that cannot be served because they've got specific pressure problems that I don't fully understand how that relates to the whole system. But you all don't know how that affects you at this point? Well, no, we haven't. The city of Atlanta is not the quickest to get back. Bolton County is pretty darn good. The city of Atlanta is a little slower. Yeah. So it's been about a year without any clarity. We know we can develop to a certain capacity. We just don't know where the problems begin to occur. What's that capacity, that certain capacity? Um, we've got it for the first, uh, I think it's 400 houses that we know of in uh, in the 1,300 acres. In Palmetto? Yeah, in Palmetto. We have investigated this, obviously, because we don't have the zone that we bring them to the hmm. But you can't develop without it. We do understand that. Right. That, yeah, that's why I, I saw that minutes and I couldn't believe the mess that they they're dealing with. Um, does anybody else have? I have more questions, but um, uh, and maybe this is a question for for Mike. But um, uh, is there any are there any numbers or analysis on the broader impact of uh? of traffic and public safety, particularly uh, I'm thinking of the of the area to the south of this on, you know, with Cochran Mill Road as it runs as it runs south and into Hutchinson Ferry. I couldn't find anything as and maybe I missed it, but um, but I think of the um, the potential of a traffic circle at Hutchinson Ferry, the very complicated border area around Old Rico Road, which uh, we've all been made aware of where roads go in and out of Palmetto and Chattahoochee Hills. Uh, what, you know, what, what's involved with moving in and out of the city there? I spoke to the mayor about that not long ago. Um, he didn't, he didn't have an answer. The, um, the, uh, the idea that the, the 
this Palmetto development will use Chattahoochee Hills roads to get to South Fulton Parkway. And I wasn't sure how, can, some, can we hear a little bit about what, what are the issues is, in terms of public safety and traffic facing that area? Because that's going to take a lot of traffic. Right, right. Certainly, certainly, this represents an increase, obviously, in in traffic in this in the area. The DRI traffic study um, and, dealt with. And, and I just, I'm sorry to mm -hmm. then cut back to myself. But then, uh, <laughs> the UDC requires analysis analysis of potential adverse effects on quote unquote nearby properties, but there's nothing about. I don't know if it was an oversight, and a couple, you know, there's a spot or two where it mentions adjacent properties, but nothing nearby, and all of that is nearby given the scope of this. And so, so I was looking for it and didn't see it. So. Right, so the only impacts on any of the nearby properties should be traffic, right? You, you wouldn't expect the development itself, the buildings and the um, uh, uh, such to have, have direct impacts on the nearby property. Part of the point of the buffers, right? Those would be um, uh, protecting the adjacent properties. Traffic is a traffic is a real concern. We've um, planned the you know concept concept plan for the city anticipates about ten thousand acres of 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 development. Right, thirty percent of the of the land in the city to be developed. This is two hundred and fifty according to the plan. Right, acres of of development, about two thousand residential units, where the overall plan is for about thirty eight thousand. Right, um, so so the um uh, gravel roads coming in and out there, so. <laughs> right 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 and so the gravel roads don't serve out. this development they don't have any entrances or exits on on the gravel roads um the palmetto property is all around the, the gravel roads right um so, so but but part of that is us so what's our side of that looking like so that's but that's not what's on the table now the palmetto we have nothing to say about the palmetto well but the udc says we have to take in take into account the safety and concerns of impacts on it says impacts on nearby properties right right so this you're saying the palmetto property will affect the other property this chat hills property i think what the udc is asking us to look guess, at is how I this guess I, project like on some level it's a bit of a fiction that these two things are not the same big thing and so so right. I'm thinking of them the same. I'm I, I'm not really willing to consider that the Palmetto thing and the village right. are are not the same entity. Right, right. Th with the, the same people driving all around it. Right, right. This this plan doesn't propose any connections into road connections into the Palmetto property where it would then come out on a gravel road. So what's being proposed here does not connect to those gravel roads. Um, and any the only entrances are right on Cocker Mill, the one on Wilkerson Mill. Um, and 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 what about then further south to Hutchison Ferry? Do right. Have, do the traffic I sense of that? should have. The, I don't have the traffic study with me. It showed a small, uh, small percentage of the traffic going in that direction. It showed most of it going out um, uh, either Wilkes Mill or mostly actually up on the parkway since that's right there. And um, uh, I don't have that number. I don't have that number I'm sorry, with with me. Uh, I'm, OK, that's yeah. OK. I, that, that was just a mm -hmm. notable Mm -hmm. aspect that uh it's a good question and, and certainly the the palmetto development will affect all those roads um quite a bit including the road cochran mill road right between um that and and the parkway and this um will also be contributing um certainly in that direction um anybody else having traffic um uh i also i i've uh and it, we, we talked a little bit earlier about the required uh, development agreement, and I'm curious about the associated required TDRs, DTCs, and the and the available information, which differs depending on which document you consult. And uh, Mr. Merrill has in, at his public meetings made various statements about this. But can can we get a coherent sense of what exactly is the status of the supposed but seemingly not I don't I don't know how to frame it right but the uh the status of the purchase of the required TDRs and DTCs mm -hmm. because it's different everywhere I look <laughs> right so you know and I don't know that we want to run through but there are four different ways of 
handling the TDR requirement for a developer. I don't know if you want to talk about all the methods. I believe that the applicant is interested in the perpetual fee method. I don't know if they plan on 100%. They can... Um, uh, uh, Anyway, this, so the development agreement itself lays out um, how those four methods work, and it 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 spells out how they will work. Then, specifically in, um, I'm talking about an agreement that we has it, it, it is still to be negotiated. So, so I'm I'm speaking about what's been discussed only so far, right? Not any final form, but the idea. And the requirement of, for the the, uh, the development agreement is that it would lay out exactly how the TDRs are going to work in this particular development. When you're in, when you're using the perpetual fee method, um, that one pretty much stands alone, and that has to be entered into upfront. Uh, if they um, chose not to use that method, you might be able to use some combination of purchase TDRs and DTCs. Um, um, but I don't think that that's um, uh, in the offing here. Uh, uh, so, but the development agreement will lay out exactly how it's going to work in this particular instance, because there are choices to be made um, each time a development wants to or has to uh, uh, provide TDRs, has to provide external preservation, um, how how the TDR program or the DTC program is going to work for that particular um, development. There is a, um, you know, the perpetual problem um, or the problem that we've been concerned about, I guess I should say, from the very beginning is how to begin receiving money or uh, purchasing, having people purchase TDRs early in the process while there's still land left to be developed, to be protected, right? Because um, uh, most of the schemes um, let a lot of development happen before you have to purchase the first TDR. One of the benefits of the DTC program is you can prorate those numbers across all of the development that happens start collecting from the very beginning. You could collect smaller numbers um, on each unit, right? So unit by unit, the numbers are a little smaller, but you can start collecting from the very beginning. And that's that's one of the benefits of that. Let me jump in just a minute. Um, it's my understanding that there's no money that's going to be collected anytime soon uh, under the TDR program. Um, it could uh, developer and Mr. Merrill is, is more than would be more than welcome to come up and buy all the TDRs right up front um, and uh, or by, by the rights all up front, but that's millions of dollars. And so it's not likely that will happen in one of the other methods. So um, if that was a, if your question was on timing, I, I it was that it or? Well, the, the question just had to do with the incoherence of the treatment of it in the document, that it's not clear how this is gonna work. I, and, it, and my concern stemmed from noticing that the development agreement hadn't yet been put in place, even though it's required. No, and I understand it's under negotiation right now so it's being negotiated now okay between the city it's a it's a development agreement between the city and the develop and the applicant right. and so that's it's uh being negotiated at this point so we don't i don't think so i don't think it's uh, we're just not to worry about that um i think it's something to worry about but it's it's uh um it it would not be it, it, the, the way it's proposed right now is the development agreement would have to be agreed upon and entered into before the rezoning uh happened with the city with the city council and so the city council will get to see it uh as proposed but it's not executed until it's approved okay you know so and i think in your new capacity you're going to get to see one pretty soon would be my guess I can't <laughs> wait. Can we, um, I, but I, i'm not trying to dodge your question i, I no, no, I, I'm, I'm answering to my understanding right now so i think it's it's in negotiation right now so there's some confidentiality issues going on right now but uh, in a, in addition, I don't think there's any uh, any uh, expectation there are going to be any um, fees paid to the city anytime soon. Okay, for this village, I, that that's of course up to you. But um, you can pay you can pay as much as you want to the city. And Mike, just to clarify, it's no problem receiving money. It's never a problem receiving money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I, was, I, I, I freely admit I'm coming to this from a position of total yeah. ignorance, reading the document and wondering which one is it and how. And, and I think the good, good clarification, Mike, I think spoke to this earlier, is if if for whatever reason the development agreement isn't enter, entered into before, before the uh, rezoning issue comes before the city council, up or down, whatever it is, before that comes to the city council, that kind of provision that was deleted would need to go back in. Mm -hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I think we can uh, make sure that happens. Even if we can't, there is, there is, it, the code does insist that the development agreement happens before the first preliminary plat. So they would have to, they would have to do it then anyway. Right. But, but yes, absolutely. We would, um, I would expect that council would um, uh, follow the advice of, of, of staff on that and, and make sure that's put back in if the, if that hadn't been, the agreement hadn't been approved and executed yet. Right. Okay. The next, um, the, uh, the park. The uh, I find myself looking at looking at this, looking at the plan, looking at the proximity to Cochrane Mill Park, and and what I see is a lot of assumptions about about the park and the park being. Uh, I don't know almost uh, how to put how to put it the 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 park as a feature of the development of the northeast corner of this thing in which we have an entertainment center, the trails into the park, uh, the development right up along the buffer in I mean the plan is fairly vague as laid out, but it still is right up against it's the buffers into the park as a as a you know now four or five years long user of the park we've all and, and anybody around here who's who uses the park um has seen vast changes come to the park just in the last two years and not all of those changes are good and they all have to do with the amount of entertainment that goes on in the park uh and and so the prospect of just what the impacts to this park are to this you know this you know Crown Jewel of Chattahoochee Hills Park is about to. I I can't tell from looking at this that we have any understanding of what the, the impact to our park will be in this development. So I wonder if we could talk a little bit about what what do we know about our park, its usage, what'll be the likely changes of that. We've just added this uh, mysterious. Uh, cell tower that appeared out of nowhere and uh, a little bit of parking. Uh, we're happy about the parking fees, but the parking is out of control. The This development proposes to add vast additional amounts of parking and an outdoor entertainment center. The, the parking was taken out, wasn't it? You're right, the, the condition related to parking was taken out, yeah. Where they, the people could park at, at the at the village to use the, to use the park. Is, but they but they can still use the entertainment center and the trails into the park, correct? I imagine, yeah, it's a public park. It's public, right? So that the the trails have? would be a separate process, right? The public works department and the parks commission would have to approve any of the you know that that entrance. It's presumed they would because otherwise you just have people going out on the road. But we don't, right? That's not done. That's not a done thing. Um, uh, the from the very beginning, all of the the concept plan, even before we were a city, showed the villages basically clustered around the park. Right, the already zoned Friendship Village to the northeast touches the park mm -hmm. on that side. The presumed Bucart Village on the west side basically touches the park. His property touches the park, um, and the the village site was basically right there. The other Merrill development, which would have been the third village in the the pre cityhood um, scheme, was can't tell you how many feet um but several about a mile i guess right from the from the border border of the park so they all always cluster on the park there's really no way to keep those people out of the park oh, well and i i'm not suggesting that <laughs> necessarily not just only that. current I, residents I, get yeah. to go to the park <laughs> new residents but do the, not but but <laughs> but the point being i mean and that just raises you know even more uh concern about what happens to the park right so with the new residents you get the new tax revenue you have to have new parks um we are already by any conventional measure overparked i don't like that term <laughs> <laughs> but over <laughs> oh, i would agree i would agree so um um i would i would suggest that the city would have to acquire more more property and, for more different kinds of parks too. that's right and different kinds of parks too right while we're in acreage over parked uh, if you i was talking to doug earlier today if you drill down in in what what that means you know there are you know how many 
how many residents per acre of park and there's standard numbers, right, that you try to meet. Atlanta, we know, has been under those numbers for a long time, acquiring new parks. We are way, 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 way over those numbers, right? Just we have so few residents and we have good parks. Um, but uh, and I would love to keep the same ratio. I'm not arguing that the ratio is out of whack for who we want to be. Um, but um, but when you look at things like, um, you know, soccer courts or <laughs> soccer courts, soccer fields and basketball courts and tennis courts and other park amenities, right, we have none of that and there that you can find ratios published for you know how many residents per soccer field how many residents per basketball court they're all just of course suggestions or rules of thumb benchmarks but um and mr lights i think you have raised a couple of very important areas i don't mean to diminish or try to cabin any reduce what you're saying here but i'll start with the park um I, unless i just and i could really be ignorant about this but in the degree of planning that's already is at the city on this i, I think that this this city needs to have a broader vision of the future for the Cocker Mill Park and and a, a comprehensive plan, if you would, or a usage study or predictions. That would be great. I was looking for anything. So yeah, and I don't I don't think we I don't think we have we have things that talk about the park and what things we want to do at the park. But in terms of a comprehensive five, 10, 15 year projection about what what that park needs to end, Cochrane Mill needs to end up looking like and how we get from here to there. I'm not sure. Again, I, I just might not know it, but I don't think we've we've in taken that step. Um, and and there are good reasons why not. But I think that if if you're raising that kind of point, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I think that I think that's an area where the city could probably invest some effort uh, to manage that wonderful resource going forward. And I know this is done. This is done. These studies of what you do with public parks. This is not nothing we'd be creating out of whole cloth. These things are done around the country. And this is a pretty big park. Um, there are people who specialize but, in this. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be something that perhaps the city council might want to consider uh, in the future. And the other, I mentioned a couple things. I think the whole idea of the infrastructure, the whole concern about the infrastructure is well placed. I'm not sure. Which, I, I'm which, sure which, I don't understand part, it. Which part of it? The infrastructure, the, the water, the sewer. It's the, a, the read, future capacity. Read the minutes of that organization. Yeah. They're a disaster. They don't even. There's the minutes openly say things like, "We don't know where that hundred fifty thousand dollars went, so we asked them to stop working." There's really great stuff. Like and, that. and my point is, I think that uh, I think you're raising a good point, which is we probably need some more, more of a global understanding of what the capacities are going to be in the city of Chattahoochee Hills as development projects come up, come before us about what's realistic and what isn't. Now, there's some of that that is, uh, you you probably, I know you have a better understanding than I do uh, about what our capacities are, future and not. But, uh, you know, that's, those are probably a couple of areas where the city council could could uh, do, some, do some good, do some good. Right? Certainly. I mean, it's, we've had a couple instances before this body with that, just a little wish and a prayer, like, oh, there will be water in the sewer, as if, you know, it's really strange. Aspirational. aspirational. Yeah. yeah. Pie in the sky. Anyway, I didn't mean to diminish your comments or anything, but that's no, no, that's no. what I'm kind of hearing. That, But I'm not sure that is for our table here. I think it may be a, more of a citywide, city council driven. I, well, but, I guess it, come, it came to mind here because the, understood. the proximity suggests I, I guess to me, the proximity suggests responsibility. If a commercial enterprise is going to take a, you know, feature adjacency to our park, a public park, what are their responsibilities regarding that? And and I'm not sure we can answer that when we don't even know how many people actually use the park today. I'm not sure when we don't even have a baseline, how we can evaluate impacts. Too many. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> I mean, it's grown out. It's I'm, Anybody who uses the park regularly, I did until recently, but I don't like my little daughter uh, smelling weed every time I go in the park. I don't want to explain that. So, so I don't use the park because it's, it's so populous right now with no breaks. And this says more. And so that's why I'm concerned. And, and there will be more even without this development, of course, right? And people come down from Buckhead, wherever they come, you know, there's some public parks. So it is, uh, um, and I think, again, this 
this takes broader planning with my view. And I didn't mean to, to say the commission wouldn't be interested and wouldn't help participate, but um, sure. I do think this is a citywide issue, shall we say. Right. Okay. Does anybody else? I didn't mean to monopolize that. Or, uh, Mr. Peake, any thoughts from you on this? I think I'm, I'm going to let Mr. Light take it. Okay, Gary. I've, uh, I've touched on, or we have all in, in, you know, I think we all have kind of similar con concerns. Um, um, uh, you know, and some of my some of my concerns go back to the comp plan and the whole notion of what a village is and how words like walkable get applied to it, and with a super highway running down the middle of it and uh, three hundred foot of buffers and a road in between the other way and so on. So I do have concerns about how how we what it is as regards the history of the comp plan, which has been widely sermonized on and recited over and over, but the but I, having read it and and thinking about what a village is, I'm struggling with that a little here. But but that, I guess that's that's not our conversation either. Um, and and mo most of the rest of it falls under those things like like uh, infrastructure and so on. So I think I'll stop. Okay. Um, any other further discussion? Um, I'll start talking here a minute, um, and then and then we'll decide. Uh, you guys jump in anytime you want. Um, I think uh, there there are parts that there the conditions that we talked about uh, adding um, if if we move forward, if the vote is to move forward, and that's not decided by any stretch. Uh, as eleven a, the twelve months, uh, seventeen to put in language, Mr. Morton about the Greta proportion of costs including on alternatives to the various alternatives to mm -hmm. uh, to get um, a paragraph or to get old condition 18 back in um, to strike the references to Palmetto replacing with the city of Chattahoochee Hills in sections 10 and 11 and then you were working on language on 16 C and D regarding, um, is it was just 10? Just 10. Just 10. Yeah. yeah. And and Mike, you were working on language, was it 16 C and D or just, just C? Just C. Just C. Just C. Just C. Just C. Just C. Okay. Um, yep, we got that. Um, from, from my standpoint, there are, um, I, I think this is a big project. I think it is an important project. Uh, it could it could be really good or really uh, maybe not great, depending on what happens. It's a long term projection, and and one can never be sure about the future. But there are certain aspects of this that I find pretty compelling. One is that um, that the, this area has been in the comp plan shown as a village for a very long time. So it's not like this is. Uh, we're, we're creating that this proposal is creating a village somewhere that was never contemplated. I think that's important. Uh, there are several things that are important. I think it is important that the box culvert is activated. I mean, that has definitely been out there for a long time. And now we have a property owner who owns both sides of the box culvert and we can connect into it. And the city can finally connect. Uh, and I, walkability, I think, is a is a interesting term and I'm not sure I fully understand it, but it, I do understand that that culvert will connect the rest of the city and the trail system if and when it ever is fully developed to over park. to Cochrane Mill, right? Oh, good. And back. Oh, I see. Well, Cochrane Mill is a, is a public park and a great one. And I think it can be made great, made better. And I think it will take some additional planning, um, but it does activate that, um, I think Mr. Nygren is the first one that actually showed me where that culvert was. And uh, I was shocked to see it. And I was shocked mostly to see that there was that kind of vision a long time ago. And the DOT bought into it, right? 
Uh, kind of shocking, actually. And so it activates that. So there, there are a number, there are pros, there are cons. It's a big development, no question about it. But I think on balance, I think that this is, uh, this is important. And uh, I think, I think I'm inclined with these conditions to, to support it, but that's just me. So um, at this point, uh, further discussion, or does someone care to make a motion? Well, I like the word that you said to add. And when we were looking at, um, you know, what number was the fire truck language again? To kind of make it a little more clear, because we kind of, we talked about it. Did I miss that? Have it in writing. Did I miss the part? Put in there. Um, we got one. Yeah, number three. Sorry, yeah, I missed that three. one, didn't I? But I would say add that to, and you know, I used to park all the time. And I'm hoping maybe this will help us find ways to improve. Friends of the park. As more friends of the park. As okay. people okay. use it, it gets more attention. There'll be more of a having a cop plan for the park and having more yeah. control controls of the park in the park. So I think that's a positive. Um I like adding those conditions back in, as, and we just need to list them out again. So, Sorry, Rodney, were you suggesting um, a change to number 13 on the fire truck? I, I thought we had decided that that was going to stay as is. Happy to do whatever you all want. I feel like you were kind of struggling to read right something as we were sitting there. So, mm -hmm. is that what we decided to do? Is we, because we kind of shifted the conversation. As we talked about right. if it's right. needed, he'll buy it. If he won't, he'll contribute. If the amount of 1.3, if it's brand mm -hmm. new, and mm -hmm. some, I'm, I'm not. We, I suppose, I, that I suppose we could spell out just what was said. Um, if the city doesn't have a ladder truck sufficient for um, serving a building over 40 feet, well, at the time, right at the time of permitting, that the owner. Um, yeah, but who's going to do it? And then again, it doesn't. The next development, if he buys one, they're not going to have to buy one. So if he doesn't buy one, contribute to one. So it kind of spreads it out in a fair way. Mm -hmm. it, it would be nice. I think what Mr. Merrill was indicating was that's easier said than done. And that uh, in practice, that's very difficult. And I'm frankly a little bit, I, I wouldn't know what to write without some, a lot of thought on it. Something to the effect that he needs to go buy it. If he don't need it, he'll contribute to one. That's, that's so the, back with the, on the subject of the fire truck, um, some language, something to the effect of, if the fire truck is needed, you'll he said he would buy. for 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 your uh, a building in your development in the in the village that you would then buy the fire truck in order to for the building to just kind of as you said right in order for the building to be constructed. But if we don't need it, he would contribute something to. Well, he said it's not fair for the people that get to use, like the sewer. So I'm looking at if he didn't need it, contribute to one. So if the city already had one, meaning he doesn't need it because the city already has one, or because he's not building always, tall? You can always expect a developer to buy a fire truck. Right, right. Oh, I agree. I agree. People that are, to make it more fair, the next one that needs it, well, there's already a fund, so you got this much, and there'll be a fire truck. Mm -hmm. So if the city already has a ladder truck, and he wants to build then a, a building, he will contribute to that. And it's complicated by if we need a fire station, we're going to need equipment in that fire station, be it a ladder truck mm -hmm. or tall building or a fire station or, yeah, fire truck or small buildings. So that's kind of, to me, it's kind of make, mm -hmm. making it a little more clear. We have so, it in writing, we know what's expected. Right, right. So something to those lines I would, I think should be added, but I'm just one of five. Right. So contributing something for the equipment in that fire station, whether it's a ladder truck or not. I think is part of what you're getting at. I mean, that's, that's what good fire station kind of fire yeah. I'm speaking out of turn here, but I, I'm not, it might be a, a time of CO as opposed to probate, so that if there is somebody else that's shifted to that, to uh, you're not going to get a CO without it. Right. Right, right. To be, you can make it conditioning that on delivery of CO. So I think the, well, fi the fire chief is always what's going to happen usually, and you know, they're all different, but. They're certainly the one who needs first usually has to pay for it. Uh, I understand that, seeing it probably 80% of the time. Um, and a lot of that is going to go, uh, going to be paid by the user. 
So if they decide to go from a four story or six story or five story or whatever, then they're gonna contribute probably the majority of that. That'll be part of our development agreement with respect to the user, I would think. Or if it's the right kind of user, we may just have to add up whatever they pay for the land. We may have to strike that. So there are lots of ways this could go. I do think it needs to be, as Rodney said, I think it needs to be clarified. And I think it is the way we've got it. But if you all want to uh, manage that, we're fine. The, the problem with the CO, I think, Chris, is that nobody's going to want to go in knowing they may not get a CO and you're not going to get construction financing. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think it's going to have to be the way you got it in order to get the, uh, in order to get the approval from the city. They're going to be, they're going to need to know that they've got a fire truck coming. Mm -hmm. New ones. I know the ones that fire chief's looking at now, I think is uh what one year, two year lead time to get it built and delivered, I think, for a new new truck. Yeah. How many years? One to one to two. I don't remember it's one year or two years. I don't remember what he said. It takes two years two years to get two a new truck. But you can get a, a pre-owned truck. And I think Mr. Merrill's right. You can put something in conditions as an in this attorney within six months of a CO or something like that. But I'm thinking while you're talking back there is maybe down the road, we need a public safety fund that way. Cause we don't know when this is being built. Do we need a truck? Do we need a station? Do we need personnel? We're not going to know. We may have two ladder trucks by then. We do have a ladder truck in Palmetto. If we need one, we know that based on a tragic fire that was in Serenby. But if it was a public safety fund, it could just be say, okay, you got to contribute X amount to the public safety fund and the sort. That would be a great one. Mike, that was what I was going to get to is because let's say there's a developer out there just waiting for this guy to build this six story building. And once it's built, the benefit is to everyone else. Yeah, and right. there should be a window of opportunity for those others who fall behind that to also contribute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you they have the benefit. Mm -hmm. Does that then reimburse the original donor? Or does it just reimburse the city for just, other purchases? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's City. Well, the city, of course. The city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the city. And, you know, we've talked about the natural buffers, and I think he agrees that we want the natural buffers without changing that. And, and no offense, but nothing like at Foxhall, which is right down, but a natural buffer. Mm -hmm. That is not, it's what we all want. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I and think that was in one of the, I think that was in one of the conditions eight. we talked yeah. about. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's all. But, um, can I, I can I ask? You, go ahead. Jeff. No, no, please, please. In li in line with those comments and Mr. West's comment about the um, the fresh market sign, um, why why strike out the the owner will, number eleven? The owner will provide city manager of Chattahoochee Hills or his designee opportunity to meet with developers and builders in Merrill Park in Chattahoochee Hills. Uh, obviously not city from that early in the design process to encourage a common understanding of the opportunities for higher quality development that affect property values, et cetera. Why is that kind of consultation struck out when Chattahoochee Hills is, you know, obviously our zoning, anybody who reads our zoning and, and, you know, suggests that they understand it, I would think would be happy to do that, but Is that with regard to the city of Palmetto specifically? Well, no. it's been made clear that we're not to talk about the city of yeah, Palmetto, so I'm talking about Chattahoochee yeah. Hill. Yeah. That, but that I, like, I mean, no, what I, my reading of what you said about having, there's our zoning and then there's the need to make sure Fresh Market has a sign where they require it. And but like what takes precedence to us, it's our zoning. And I don't care about fresh market. I mean, so so why is that an I, let me let me answer that if I might, because you're exactly right. There are certain uh companies and fresh market, maybe one of them actually, Chris has a lot of experience with those, and they will not change no matter what your zoning is. So they don't get to go there. So that's the answer to your question. The city, whoever comes in is going to have to comply with your ordinance 
or get a bearing. They don't, if you want it, McDonald's, let me give you a great example of McDonald's. They won't go without the arches. So in certain places, you'll see the arches. That doesn't look like, it doesn't look like a McDonald's arch because that's part of the zoning. Mm -hmm. But that's one where they got to please you. You've got an ordinance there in your city. They got to comply with that ordinance or they've got to get a variance. And by the way, I agree with that philosophy. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think you need to be really reasonable on, on the variances when those people are there where there's a balance? Of course I do. But that's a decision for you as a city council. Right. Does that does that answer the question? Yeah. But that is the absolute answer to the question. Okay. Mike, you had said number 11 was more right. in line with something else. Right, right. But I... That. I think I get what you're saying, right? Because the, the point of number 11 was to be able for the city to be able to meet with the folks who are doing work for the developer in in Palmetto early on in the process, right? To have some just conversation, right? Not exert any, we don't have any ability to exert pressure, right? But just have the conversations on, you know, the way um, uh, the way we see. We we could, if you wanted to craft something, um, it, it's hard to define what early means, right? But just something to the extent of the the developer bringing their um, uh, their customers, right? The whoever's developing a building or a neighborhood or a block or something into the city early on in their design process, so that we get to have a conversation. Again, defining early, right? <laughs> he's he's probably not going to want to do that before they've inked something. <laughs> No, actually, I like that concept, and we've actually invented that for the city of South Fulton. I actually required the builders, and we got one. We don't know if they're going to end up signing a contract, but about what was the eighth draft, the eighth draft of the contract. We required them actually to meet with the city, and they've never been required to do that before. It's the biggest builder in the, in the world. And they said, why did we, and we said, because... We want a certain kind of development. We want we went through the community and they want to participate. So we had a meet with the uh, um, with city council and uh, it was a good process. They, they believe me, they came with a little bit better game than they normally would have because they knew they had to meet with the city. We we like that. How would you describe the state the stage at what stage if we were to write a condition? Well, we were in the that is before actually, which is unusual, before we entered into uh, the first draft of the contract. We're now in the eighth draft, believe yeah. me, with these big builders, it's a long process. Mm -hmm. And we're happy for the mm -hmm. city to meet. Just say during the during during the process and before the the uh, or the transfer of the property. Or the transfer of the property, then the city will meet with the developer. That's a good program that, by the way, is not going on anywhere in the country. I have never heard of that done, and I'm an old, 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 old guy. <laughs> and the city of South Fulton, they loved it. And they had a great meeting. And they discussed product. And they showed them some product. So it was a very cooperative process. And we think that'd be good for to require, you know, throughout the city of mm -hmm. Jet and G Hills. Mm -hmm. and by the way, as somebody who's worked with several, a lot of different developers, who sat in over 250 residing um, rooms, Mr. Barrel is by far the most deliberative, cooperative developer that I have seen. Most of them, it's very different experience. So I think it's a, it's a lot of benefit to the residents of this city to be able to have somebody like project of this scope, uh, which has been expressed that, you know, it, it is part of the plan for the city. It's a somewhat unique opportunity that, that what Mr. Merrill brings and being invested somewhere, somewhere close, somewhat unique, sorry. Thank you, Mr. West. Thank you, Mr. Merrill. Thank you, Christine, for pressing on that issue. And I think you've got the direction so, on 11. Yeah, yeah so for. the only other part is who who, sh who should I say they're meeting with in the city? Just leave it as representative of the city yeah. and, and that, or the city manager or the representative. Or you. Okay. Sure, sure. <laughs> I didn't know if it, he mentioned no, meeting with council members, right, leave, if you wanted it, to. Leave it general so you have some flexibility yeah. there. Right, right. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. It'll be, I'll put zoning administrator or. You can yeah. Members of the city council want to send their uh, district, or if they just mm -hmm. mm -hmm. thank you, Mr. Okay. This is a little 
a question I just thought of thinking of the sure. path through the yeah the tunnel under the parkway. It's it's nice. It's big enough to ride a horse under. I've been there several times in the it's better than you think. It's it drains very well. When would we be able to use that and have connectivity all the way through? Well, immediately. I mean, the, the reason I asked for, I went from 12 to 24 months was just to figure out how to get it done. Nothing ever operates as quickly. I'm fine with actually your 12 months. Yeah. So the path connectivity from the park through your underpass to the Palmetto property. Yeah, and it's going to come across, it's going to come along the, uh, the creek. So the location, we know where it's going to be. We just got to, we got to get the center line. So you can go up to 10 feet on each side or if, or if the path requirement in case they gave a, a grant was does that, five feet. Does that go through your Palmetto project? Pardon? Does the path, is there, does yeah. the path connectivity? We're, we're going to have a path that goes all the way and connects, connects uh, Chattahoochee Hills through um, our project in Palmetto, through this project to the park. That's been the idea for the last 20 years, and you should say that's and that could, idea. And that could happen. Well, it's the so, condition is 12 months to get the easements. That's right. And then the construction, if Mr. Merrill constructs them, which he's uh, agreed to do, uh, that's at a different at a later time when each phase gets built. But there's an option for an NGO, uh, a path or foundation to come in and take the project over. So the easements be with the top. Yes, that's right. So the easement would give, yeah, that's in uh, outside organization people, the city, some would be allowed to come in and do a natural path, right? Sure. Cut trees right. and and put the bath in. No, it's in the back no, it's, like it's back in in eleven a, eleven a. Any other discussion? Further discussion? Um, well, the conditions that we've been talking about. Um, I tell you what, let's let's see if there's a motion and then we can uh, and then we can specify the conditions. Keeping the motion general. Be very yeah. I'll make a motion. You just got I'll make a motion to approve with the modified conditions as we've discussed tonight. Is there a second? I'll second that. Um Let's discuss now before voting. Let's discuss the conditions. Make sure we're on the same page. Okay. I'm showing that in 11A, the 24 months is being changed to 12 months. Mm -hmm. I'm showing that in it's condition 11A. In condition 17 of the conditions, um, there's going to be language added that clarifies uh, the owners, as the terminology used. Uh, uh, purport Go ahead. So you said 17. I think it's 15. I had 17, but yeah. it's probably old 17. Okay. Went back it's it, it's the uh, 15 traffic improvements. Yeah, it's traffic improvements. Yeah. It's traffic improvements. Mm -hmm. But that, that, that is, uh, well, wait a second. Or is it 17 that talks about it? No cost. 17 is stormwater? Yeah, no. New that's, been, that's correct. It is uh, um, that the owner, uh, the developer, pays a proportionate cost on the NOD required improvements, uh, traffic improvements. And there are alternatives, and one of them is fairly clear, but one of them isn't. The alternatives two aren't clear. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be clarified. Mm -hmm. uh, old 18 goes back in. Mm -hmm. um, 10 and 11 are modified, as we talked about. With respect to eliminating the references to the city of Palmetto mm -hmm. uh, and replacing the city of Chattahoochee Hills, is that an accurate description? That's right. And that's right. A little bit that? more modification on eleven, but yes, we just talked about that. More, the more yeah. modification on eleven, and then sixteen C is a uh, back end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other provision is you're working on the ladder truck. Uh, right. Right. Uh, okay. uh, what was the term that he used? The public safety fund. Public safety fund. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I would say that. Uh, all right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, with respect to the ladder truck, I think that the answer to that I think that's going to take some work, and I would suggest that our position on that is that 
the recommendation is that that language be developed for the city council okay. review with okay. uh, whatever the recommendation is. Okay. I think there's a dollar amount attached to that. You're not suggesting a particular dollar amount. Well, I, I'm not sure how I could, yeah. to be honest. Okay. It would be a sway. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Motion second. We've had discussion. If anybody wants to discuss further, we can discuss further. If not, I'll move to vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? It was uh, four in favor, one against, one opposed. Thank you. We have one more public hearing, and then we have some new business. Does, uh, would anyone be interested in a small break? All right, let's take uh, five minutes. Yeah. Five minute break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there is. There, I don't know, there is one. I'm warned. I don't wear my business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Put on this nice pair of wool pants that I've had for years that I wore for years. I'm I'm actually a moth hole in it. <laughs> so, so it's so yeah. so yeah. 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 No, she, she reached out to me. I, I just yeah. never. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I will tell you that. We need to go to my ball. She put on something you like wearing. And I did. So I want to get you a little shirt, a nice white shirt. I bet. I bet it was great. You can, I can throw half my stuff in here. Because you have been here. Oh, it always, it always well, good to see you this afternoon. Did you guys ever miss me? It's been 30 years. Like, yeah, because everybody wants business casual. Yeah. I like that idea. Oh, it's, oh, it's great. I like that idea. Thank you for the gifts. I appreciate it. I'm going to take them down with me when uh, I'm meet Harrison. He said, yes, Mr. Chief Wiz, I wasn't able to make that. Thank you for this meeting that I wasn't able to make. The wallet has more value than the Shopping. But you know, I've never had even And you know what? It used to be allergies for one particular time and from the spring. And now it seems like that's kind of like everything. No, this means that we really had to spread out. We got to be approved. And is it so? And Scott, there's a choice. So you go. I have to think Camille. That's quite different. I'm saying they have to go to the doctors and things. Hey, what's for dinner? I mean, we have lunch up there. I thought Merry Christmas. Let me say bye to Rodney. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Hey, you got any snacks? you know what I have? I have peanut butter. Now, five of it in my in my uh, in console. Yes, you'll never go hungry. What did you break down? You need a blanket and some crackers. 
Dallas. Yeah, I mean, I mean, she's 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 older than you. 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 Yeah, Ronnie, thank you very much, sir. I would to see you. Appreciate you the question and comment. We did, I think, with the conditions, and uh, we'll probably ask the same exact question. We'll look forward to it. We'll look forward to those questions. See you. Yeah. 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 Close to know that we know what I'm going to do. We're excited about that. We're jeans and cowboy boots. Do you mind? I think a little bit. It's tomorrow. I lost all three. Oh, my God. Get her on the feet. Yeah, we're We got that maximum impact. I don't think there's any way for yeah, that's tomorrow. Well, no, I'm going to take my mom, get ready tomorrow night. I was shaking. I don't think we can take her to bed. She'll be in the morning. I'll get dinner waiting for you. I don't believe it or not. My husband says I'm fragile. I can just tell for now. Hey, Mike. On this one, either you or Katie will need to make a presentation on the Serenby. On the yeah. staring me thing. Yeah. yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Go ahead and text it. Thank you. Well, you know what's been. Hey, folks, if we could. Uh, am I on here? Am I on? Hey, folks, let's uh, reconvene here. I'm calling the uh, public hearing to order on the uh, next hearing. And this is a recommendation on an ordinance to amend the official zoning map to rezone 202 and 83 hundredths acres from the rural district to mixed use Hamlet, HMMU district to expand the Serenby Hamlet um, by 202.83 acres on a single parcel on the east side of Sardis Road at the Coweta County line and adjacent to the recently rezoned Simpson parcel. That's the uh, matter that's before us. We will follow the same uh, hearing procedure rules that we talked about earlier for the previous public hearing. Um, Dana, do we have any? We do comments? not have any poet comment cards. It might be that new buyer. Somebody may have left something here. We're yeah, trying to. Right I don't, I don't know. Yeah, just go see if you can grab. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, Mr. Nygren, uh, it is your option as the applicant. I assume you're the applicant for this. Okay. Um, it's your option whether you want to talk about this or make a presentation about it. It's entirely your option. Okay. Um, I don't think we have uh, any public comments. Mr. Morton, would you please introduce the topic for us? Sure, sure. As you said, it's um, 200, <clears throat> excuse me, 202.83 acres. Uh, expansion of the Serenby Hamlet. It's at the Coweta County line, roughly square shaped, a little taller than it is wide, um, uh, on the east side of Sardis Road. So to the west across Sardis Road is the um, Sardis Farms equestrian farmette uh, development. Um, there are a few single family homes um, along Sardis Road to the west, um, uh, along Watkins Road to the east. I'm sorry, not much across Sardis to the west yet. Um, and then there are a few homes um, it, on the Coweta County side of the line, um, just as many of those lots are on both in both places are are empty. Um, but there are a handful of houses on uh, on either side. Um, 
There is no um, site plan or concept plan uh, attached to this application. Um, so uh, without um, some other approval by city council of a, of a, of a concept plan, um, there's there would be no development uh, permitted on, on the property. Um, the rezoning, of course, would um, add um, over 140 acres of almost 142 acres of open space uh, requirement uh, in the Serenby Hamlet because of the uh, that 70 percent open space and civic space requirement, I should say. Um, and uh, so the development rights, um, uh, barring some other uh, approval by city council um, uh, for which the planning commission would have to make a recommendation. Um, uh, the development rights then would be applied elsewhere in the Serenby Hamlet. Um, in the Spella neighborhood in Coweta County, um, when you all approved that preliminary plat, you may remember um, not all the lots were approved on the preliminary plat because they didn't have the entitlements. Um, there are also some lots slated for uh, apartments in Motto um, where it's, um, some of these de development rights might be, um, might be applied. Um, but there's... Um, uh, nothing specific to talk about on the on, on the property because nothing is to be approved at this point. Thank you. Um, no public comments. Correct. So we're going to open and close the public comment period of this uh, and open it up for discussion. Um, I, I actually do have a couple of questions, um, and they're clarifications. I'm sure they're pretty easy. Uh, the the owner of the property is CH Development, correct? And does it own the entirety of the property, the all all the two hundred and eighty-two acres? So there's not a there's no one else. No, no, this is a partnership we developed with one of our investors to buy the land. We're developing the no, no, it's, you understood my question, which is just I we want to make sure we're not rezoning somebody's property that yeah. isn't requesting it. So Sarah and BCH properties is the partnership. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um the uh, there, there's a little. I'm not sure this one you'll be able to answer. Um, I see that there's reference to a little bit of difference in references to the land lots in the package. If you look at the letter from SEI, uh, the this November 17th, 2023 letter from SEI, it references land lots that this property is in within land lots 78 and 83. And then if you look at the legal description. It's just land lot 83. And then if you look at their depiction of the land lots, uh, I think this may be due to the overlap area, but I just don't know. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're talking about, do you think, Mike? I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is probably not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> SEI, I mean. Right. Yeah, right. That's, that's what I would suspect because those are the two land lots and it does specifically call out an overlap area of 1.37 acres, but it's not. It's not clear. Well, it's not in the legal description. You see, it's right. in it's in the letter, mm -hmm. but it's not in the legal description. And that the legal description is what will control. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's kind of easy. Right. Seven, yeah, this, eight, is that one the Simpson property? I think we're talking yeah. about yeah, I think we're talking about the overlap area there is what I think is the source of the budget don't know. Yeah. And so, uh, my so we'll need to make sure that we get before this is uh, this is approved clarification from SEI on whether or not we need to add another land lot to the legal description. I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, it's a good catch. We can certainly uh, uh, propose a condition that this be issue issue be clarified. I Sorry, I will say the the um, the survey itself also only mentions one land lot. Yeah, no, I know it's the, it's just the, that letter, title. and so I'm not I'm not sure what's um, right. Okay, so it's a condition. I think it would be a condition mm -hmm. that this issue about the legal description be clarified, um, specifically with respect to uh, the two land lots that are referenced. Even better, <laughs> harmonized, reconciled, corrected. Mm -hmm. Um, have have there been any comments from neighbors? We have uh, we had uh, neighbor meeting, and it's all fairly positive. Everyone in this area understands once it's entitled that that then they understand that that seventy percent is going to be preserved or even more uh, in that case. So uh, generally, neighbors around Serenby are very. 
have with respect to this project has the city received any comments from neighbors or anything no no okay. um that's actually all the questions i have i got a comment from a neighbor the same one when the when the Simpson property was taken in and he was concerned with the line and where SEI was claiming the line was. Oh, no. And he called on this and said people are on his property again. But the, I don't know if that's, he just. We have met with him. Uh -huh. Clarify and take everybody out. In that space. Okay, so he's seen this, the, where your line is and stuff. We all agree where the line is when you're actually. Warren does. You know, everybody's been used to wandering back there and has a big set of property. Right. Okay. Well, well, then the condition would be um, that the that the uh, property line be um, properly defined. So there yeah. doesn't have to be a legal description. No, there is and but yeah i mean there, there's, there's i i think it i mean unless there's a a conflict in the title i would think it's it's done right the survey would 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 lay it out you would know where the is are again if the title shows an overlap the, if the titles overlap that's a different so question is this is this for the simpson property or just that one property is what the the simpson property was already rezoned so this Touches okay. the Simpson property. The Simpson property in this touch. Oh, it's just the little triangle. It's just the rectangle. Simpson. Right. That's right. That's okay. right. Yeah. 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 They're, they're, I don't want to complicate issues because because until we get the master plan, there is a a overlap conflict depending on the dates. And there was, and that was divided into 10 acres coming off of Watkins Road. They did not honor the property line that dates like 50 years before. And we found that in the title search. Once we do, we are going to basically get it, it, it's anywhere from. 18 inches to 12 feet, I think is the greatest along that whole property. We're not going to go through that whole process, but we're going to come in when we do the concept plan and ask that the city recognize the original property line as far as buffers. But we're going to go ahead and do quick claim deeds to clean it up and just give everybody the property that they think they have, whether it's 18 inches or it's not big. And it, the disputed area is all in the 150 foot bump. Right. So, but that will be when we do the concept plan if that comes out. But I don't think that's what you're referring to. I don't think that's any of this complication. It may be, I mean, it may be that overlap area. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it is. And, and that could be. It sounds like it is. So I think for purposes of rezoning, we need to make sure that we've got the accurate property line. Right, 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 right. It and should match whatever they purchased. Should it should so? Um, we purchased one thing and found out there's a very problem. So SDI will know how to clean that up. And like we we're, we're going to go ahead and give everybody. I mean, there's nothing on it, and nobody. It's all open woods, like. So I, I, think, I think uh, my I think you're going to need to talk to Rick Lindsay to make sure okay. that it's protected. Okay. Okay. That we're okay. not rezoning somebody else's property. Right. Okay. And okay. and that there are enough qualifications there, Mr. Nagran. I don't doubt what you're saying. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, it sounds like it's a matter of of cleaning up a disputed property line or a potentially disputed property line. But that being said, the city can't really be rezoning somebody else's property mm -hmm. like that. Uh, well, they can, but I don't think that's the intent. Right. So, uh, <laughs> right. or where they want to go. So, so uh, the city attorney probably should be consulted. Okay. Okay. I'll check. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll check with him on that. And I, so, if I understand correctly, you're planning on quit claiming the overlap to the other property owners, so they will hold title with the property. But you're asking that the um, the buffer be measured from the that far line. Um, the original. Right. 
which is in the legal description. Yes. So, so again, my understanding of what was just said, that easternmost, so we're talking about the eastern boundary, right? So the easternmost line, which gives them the most property, is where they would measure the buffer from, no, no, but they would no. actually deed that little sliver to the other owner. So the buffer would then be measured from from that from the the far lower. So it, it would be a reduction of the buffer by up to twelve feet in in the in the uh, farthest case. But the property owner there is getting the benefit of that twelve feet by getting clear title Somewhere to it. between the twelve feet and the no. um, I, right. I'm not I'm not sure how that all works, but uh, yeah. and the propriety of that, but. Uh, the gross acreage is about 1.3 acres of that whole overlap area. Mm -hmm. It's not that much. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. it's something the city council can probably uh, deal with and get, yeah. get satisfied yeah. with. Um, but, and but you're right. the variance is needed, but I, I'm just not sure we can, to. how buffers, whether you've, okay. that can be done quite that way, right. uh, measuring buffers. But we'll make sure, we'll, we'll get Rick to weigh in. Yeah, yeah. Please, <laughs> please. Um, so I will point out that they can, by agreement with the property owner, reduce a buffer. Um, yeah, that's right. That's so, right. so if they if that agreement were a part of these quick claim deed, and that was the plan. Yeah. Okay. That's so, part of the plan. We're, we're gonna give you the land. But we want to agree. To... That sounds better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Um, any further discussion, or does someone want to make a motion? We need a condition now to discuss that. Or I don't that, that we have a condition that the city attorney review this issue and provide. Agreed. I think that's right. right. So that's a condition of your vote, but yeah. not to go in the list of conditions because it'll be settled by the time, right? It would be a condition to present to city council, a condition of this of the planning commission's recommendation. I think it goes in the conditions. I think right. it goes in the conditions. Because you're recommending conditions for them to adopt. Yeah. Hope it will have had to have already happened at Correct. that point. Right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It goes in the list of conditions. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm recommending approval with the recommended conditions, including the ones in mind. Is there a second? There's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that's the end of the public second public hearing. Let's uh, move to new business, I believe. Old business. We have no old business. Uh, correct? No old business. So uh, correct. New correct. business. Um, I want to make a motion. Let's go ahead. All right. I'd like to make a motion that we recognize uh, Mr. Scott Leitze and Mr. Rodney Peake tonight for their service. And give them all a round of applause for the last Wait a second. Thank you, Jim. The last thank time you. in this room with us. So thank you very much. Um we also have on the new business agenda our calendar. Um and I think yes, go ahead. we have the oh, no, seed grow. We have okay. seed grow, but all right, sorry. we're gonna get take care of these okay. couple of things. Here. <laughs> um uh you have a preference on the count on the agenda on the calendar? Yeah, there was a a primary and a backup. Oh, right. So the city council adopted the option two, which is both meetings the same day. So that's what council approved. Oh, so the plan. This is planning commission. This is city council. Yeah. yeah. We had a backup option that Katie said, I thought. Didn't you have like uh, a. I just, I just said. Oh, the option two. That's the city council calendar. Just for council. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just so you could see when those meetings were. Um, what if, days do you have problems with? Yeah, um, we, we will have. I hope it's July, conflicts going forward. Okay, July eleventh is my wife's birthday. I'd be happy to move. <gasps> wow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So those are okay. So those are all Thursdays. We could, um, if you want to move them to another Thursday, or you could adopt all but those two dates if you're not ready to settle on those two. Um, you could uh, move to the preceding Tuesday. Potentially, there may be a conflict with other meetings. I don't know, parks or historic or something like that. Parks Commission is typically the Tuesday, right, right before the planning commission. Mm -hmm. How about the Wednesday? Um, Just before the Thursday. Uh, yeah, we usually don't talk about Wednesdays, but yeah, those are generally okay. available. The next Thursday. Can you go 
That's fine with me. That's fine too. That's, That's fine too. Yeah. So May 23rd and July 18th. Um, does that work? I guess you guys don't they care don't, anymore. They don't get the function. You go. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're all on board with that. Let's just go ahead and do that, Mike. And Katie, okay. Thank you. You got the two new dates, twenty third. Yeah. yeah. So we probably should make a. We should probably should do make a motion to. Yeah. The, 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 the the gap between May twenty third and June fourth is pretty quick with your um, deadlines. I mean, I, our deadline might be that Friday right after the meeting, but. May twenty third and June fourth. Yeah, we're getting materials anyway. It, it'll be what it'll be, right? We'll just have to. You may have minutes to get. For the next um, if agenda, if we need package. to adjust those dates, we can. I'm sorry. If we need to adjust the dates, we can. Great. So I make Great. a motion we adopt the agenda as as uh, revised. Second. I'll take a second. All in favor that have an interest in this. Uh, All right. We have new business: the estates at Cedar Grove, Phase Two, preliminary plan approval or disapproval. Um, Right. Would you would like to talk about this a little sure, bit? Sure, be happy to. Um, we have a preliminary plat in front of us. It, it uh, generally matches what was approved in the concept plan. Um, some notable changes, but the, the overall layout uh, is the same. Uh, it has two less lots than were approved in the concept plan. They've um, added a, uh, a retention pond in the northeast corner. Um, where there were some lots, so it's a, a smaller number of lots. They've also reduced um, uh, what had been shown as buffer, because this used to be the edge of the district, um, but now with El Barroso to the north having been rezoned as a part of the same district, um, uh, there, the buffer requirement went away. Um, and so they've lengthened, as you can see, some of the lots um, in the uh, northeastern part of the developable portion, kind of in the middle of the overall plan. Um, uh, so that there's only 50 feet between that and the El Barroso property. So, so it is a 50 foot buffer now. Um, that's right. Okay. That's right. right. But no buffer is required uh, anymore. Now it is, of course, a change. Um, uh, but um, uh, the implication of it would be that maybe there's less open space. But we ran um, the open space numbers, and I don't know if you've followed the all the text on the open space numbers that was in the um in the uh, memo i'm happy to walk you through it but it's kind of a complicated um uh, uh list of on-site and off-site open space and meeting the requirements of the variance for off-site open space plus the re uh, but anyway they meet all the requirements and i can again walk you through that if you if you'd like they have as much open space as they are required to have um no more off-site than they're allowed to have um and uh, uh, so um, the staff recommendation would be for for approval. It's it's close enough to the existing concept plan that uh, uh, it seems to match. Oh, there's also a change. You can see the connection shown here only as a trail. It will need to be a road, but the connection to the El Barroso uh, to the north, they're going to connect connect those roads. So El Barroso had the road going to this to the to the south, uh, almost up to what their buffer had been in, in their plan. We talked about in their rezoning, the need to connect and um, had agreement from the, the, the property owner of, um, of the Estates of City Road phase two. And so that, um, again, only shown as a trail here, might add a red line to the approval saying that that will be a road, um, but that's the, um, um, also a change. It's, they had to widen the, uh, the that, that available right. So you lost me when you said add a red line to the approval? Oh, it, yeah, just a, a, basically like adding a condition, right? Approved with with this, with a condition, it's a condition that that would be um, that that would be a a road where it shows it where it shows a trail connecting to El Barroso. Um, that's not. But, but the, no, the right would... of way for it is sufficient. Okay. And and we can make it happen in the LDP, but it's it's not a bad idea just to add it as a condition. So what is, what condition is staff recommending there? Uh, I'm sorry. What condition is staff recommending? Um, that? So it, that the uh, the trail. The north-south uh, trail shown in the easement um, that connects to the El Barroso property um, will be a road and not just a trail, built as a road and not just a trail. No requirement for pavement, but a road. Um, any discussion? We have a motion. Make a motion to accept the Cedar Grove Phase Two with that um, condition you listed. Is there a second? I'll second, please. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Um, 
And I believe we are through with our agenda, correct? So, I have the, um, if you're interested, oh, yeah, I have the building report. permit numbers, staff right? Report, Paul, please, please. There's not, not a, a lot to discuss. Um, actually, a much bigger month than for permitting than November of a year ago. Um, uh, seven homes versus one, 21 permits versus five. Um, otherwise, not, you know, you can see it's, I guess the numbers speak for themselves. Well, unless it's further business, I'll suggest we adjourn the meeting. I just want to say it's been a pleasure serving on the Planning Commission for many several years with Scott and Patrick and yourself and Christine and even Jed when he was here. Mm -hmm. It's been an honor and um, learned a lot and enjoyed it all. Thank you, sir. It's great. Ditto. Thank you for the second time. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that and say uh, <laughs> it's, it's been an education. Good <laughs> condition. Good <laughs> Meetings adjourned on that okay. note. <laughs> we need a motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, we've adjourned it, but okay. <laughs> we have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second. second. Okay. All in favor. All right. All right. Thank you. That took a moment.